<laughs> I'm listening in Twitch in the app thing over here and also on Twitch multiple. So I'm like, why is it echoing? But it should be good. Excellent. We are good to go. I don't need those. I don't need to listen to myself speak. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to another day of board game design. Get rid of this. This is our old stuff. Today we're doing new, new stuff. Cult of the new. Keeping it fresh, keeping it real. All right, so there's a few minor changes. I changed the category to just chatting from makers and creators because, eh. Why not? Seems a very chatty show that we have here. Uh, I haven't pre-thought of a word or concept for today's creation, so if you have anything that you want me to start my mind mapping from, feel free to shout it out digitally in the chat, because otherwise I probably won't hear you. I might hear you spiritually or through the butterfly effect of the words reverberating, reverberating through the universe, but more guaranteed I'll see it if it comes into the chat. Actually, we do have some words in the chat already, such as echo. Echo could be a good word to start our mind mapping from. Tech seems good. Hello everyone. On with the games. All right, so unless someone else has really cool suggestion to start off our brainstorming with, I'm just gonna go with Echo. Echo? Echo? All right. Quick recap, if this is your first time watching the show, I start with a concept. I'm gonna do a type of brainstorming called mind mapping to come up with a bunch of related concepts. From there, we're gonna talk about game ideas, bounce some things around, and eventually come up with uh, an idea that's a little more con concrete, something that we could potentially build a full game around. Last week, we had a ton of awesome ideas. Do we have the brainstorm? Truth of science. Yeah, we came up with like three and a half game ideas, which was super fun, super awesome. All based around dinosaurs is our core concept different ways of bluffing, mechanical structuring of taking scientific concepts and proof and playing around with those ideas. That was last week. This is a new week. Another new thing I'm going to be trying today, um, last week I broke up what I was prototyping with the concepts that we were talking about. It was a little disjointed to some of the viewers, so if I can if everything comes together just right, hopefully I'm gonna go straight from this into prototyping. Uh, that's a new thing, so we'll see how smoothly that goes. <laughs> Papa's new bag says, Echo, sounds good. All right, so we won't go from there. So what is this, what is this idea of Echo? I like to breathe in, sink into the word free my mind for some brainstorming, get those creative juices flowing with my unicorn water. Unicorn water is just a fancy term for water in a fancy unicorn mug. It's just water, I swear. <laughs> All right, echo. Uh, makes me think of rever reverb, reverberation. Kind of this concept of uh, vibrations, musical instruments. I did do a game that I was testing out, a smaller, I think it was in one of the 18 cards micro games I was trying to prototype around uh, guitar chords. And it was this cool, <laughs> I was thinking about the cool parody song Four chords, which if you haven't listened to it, it's very addictive. It just mashes a bunch of songs together that use the same four chords. So I was doing that into game concept with some uh, swapping, swapping of cards, swapping of the chords, working with a partner and trying to come up with the right collection, set collection. I think there's a lot of cool space around 
musical instruments, musical concepts. Uh, there've been some cool games on Kickstarter late lately. Uh, shoot, I think it was called Harmony or something, where you're actually like learning musical theory as you're playing this game, which I think is really cool, especially because I dropped out of, I didn't drop out, I think I actually passed the class. I took music theory in college because I needed the credits or something. I was very frustrated about how arbitrary the whole thing seemed. But the cool part, if you actually dig into musical theory, there's a lot of fun, rigorous uh, math in there. So, hey kids, don't drop out of music theory because it's cool and you're going to regret it when you're older. This has been your PSA for today. You already had reverberation going off of that. <laughs> I think Echo, uh, I think Duplication. Senor Bob, welcome to the stream. Thanks for tuning in again. Great to have you here. Uh, duplication, Iteration, Distortion. Yeah, all those. I think I'm going to spike um, duplication and iteration off of the same node because they're pretty similar concepts. Uh, distortion is cool though because if you think of an echo um, I'm actually gonna go to the doodle page get some doodles in there echolocation and sonar yes oh we got so much good stuff going on already echolocation and sonar. So I'm going to draw a little picture of what I think about when I think about an echo. So you have uh, your sound, right? But let's imagine that a sound is a picture, right? <laughs> it's going to go, stick with me here. So imagine a sound is a picture, like a house, for example. Perfect echo, I shout house into a cave. Here's my echo cave with all my sounds bouncing off the walls, because that's what I think about. Very, you know, 80s, <laughs> 80s school concept of what the idea of an echo triggers. Sounds echoing in a cave, so it's house, and then you get a smaller house coming back, and I mean, I should have started my house is bigger because they're getting way too small. Smaller house, and then a smaller house, until eventually just fades away into nothingness or null. Uh, but coming back to this concept of distortion, as the sounds are bouncing around, sound waves, it's not like a picture or like light waves in exactly the same way because the way the sounds interact with each other, much more likely to affect each other, the waves, going across each other and distorting the sound. That's where distortion comes from, right? Interaction of sound waves. And I'm not sure if we got waves yet, but that's a cool thing to add to this. Just a bit more. More happy hellos in the chats. I like to say hi. I like to say hi to everyone. Everyone is cool. Everyone is welcome. All right, so we have iteration, duplication, more of a generic uh, theoretical concept and more of a visual concept as this idea of waves and sound waves, kind of like ocean waves, right? Going over each other, bouncing into each other, bouncing off of each other, having a ripple effect. Get some rippling in here. Get some doodles. All sorts of different types of waves here. Loops. Ooh. Loops, sound loops. I'm thinking when you're saying loops, it makes me think of those cool YouTube videos that have the, the foot pedal where you'll like sing part of the chorus and then repeat it. Oh my gosh, these people are so talented. 
where they have that whole, they'll do a whole song with just them, like, recording the pieces to it and singing over the top and doing all the instruments. I wish I could do that. It's super impressive. All right. I have my different waves. Maybe I'll get this, get this going on a grid here. This idea of sine waves, log waves, slow waves, very fast, high-pitched waves, um, waves with different intervals. You can have a very long, big wave, you can have very spiky waves, right? Seeing a lot of visual shape type stuff. Just spitballing some of the things I'm thinking. So we're thinking, like, that's one potential direction for it, right? This idea of waves, patterns, stitches, ocean waves. There's a lot of cool, uh, very interesting, rich territory in the wave section of this brainstorm. And then you also have just iteration or repetition. So instead of, like, because the, the sound, you're talking about an echo of a sound, the wave is continuous, right? You can't see the sound wave, but when you talk, when I speak to you, it's coming out as sound waves and it keeps going, right? It just it keeps going, bounces around, even if you can't see an echo. But the way that we experience it, words and sounds, it's of a punctuated, iterative nature, right? I say a word and I say another word. You can say word, right? And if it's this instance bouncing back and forth, so we don't hear a continuous stream of noise, which uh, noise is a cool concept as well that we can potentially dig into. Uh, but we're thinking discrete. Discrete instances of sound, sound bites, right? Bites slash units. Uh, and this just gets into this concept of I have a thing, repetition. I have a thing or an item, a theme, multiples of them, sets of items. The whole solo instrument make a song thing would actually make a great game. Assuming you didn't need to have the heaps and heaps of talent necessary to actually pull it off. Mm. Sine, cosine. Yes. That is definitely what um, I'm thinking of. Sine, cos. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since those math classes. Yeah, um, solo instrument making a song. That makes me think of drop mix. Which I got to... My friend Alex has a copy of that and I got to play that over the weekend, which was... Super fun. I was glad that I finally got a chance to see it in action. If you don't know Drop Mix, it has these really cool RFID cards you can slot into it. It's basically a game system. You lay the cards down, you can overlay them, and it changes the vocals, it changes the beats, uh, and you basically feel like a DJ just slapping these cards down. So it takes off the skill component of it, uh, which is really cool and really fun. Drop, mo drop Mix. Just take notes as we go. Take off the skill component of being a DJ. Component of DJism. Ooh, okay, cool. This gives me a fun idea. What if this all comes down to the core uh, grasping at ideas for a cool board game idea? What if we're playing as a bunch of bad DJs? So unskilled DJs where we're just trying to we don't know or maybe unskilled is too harsh of a word so maybe if it's um, learning DJs so we're DJs trying to learn all right we're DJs trying to figure out our skills and uh, we're practicing.
So we're laying down the tracks and we're not sure yet what goes well together, what goes with what. So we're just testing things out. And the game itself is going to be showing us whether we're right or wrong. So if it was a digital game, you know, you'd like say, oh, I think this beat goes with uh, this track. And you'd put it down and have a big X. Arr, incorrect. Which tracks go together? Question mark. Who knows? Who even knows? I like that. That's fun stuff. All right, what else we got here? Yeah, it's a neat toy. It's <laughs> digging into drop mix a little bit. I. Oh man, it's such, it's so, it's very interesting from a product perspective and ties into what we're doing here for the game designs. Like what exactly do people want to play? Part of the differences between play and game. So I played a drop mix, but I didn't do the game of drop mix, where it's like competitive, you're trying to lay things down, you get different points, you're paying attention to that display there. Uh, when it started out, it was $99 at retail. I think it's what we were selling for at Mox. Now I think it's closer to 30 or 40 on Amazon. I think it was a little bit, the marketing was weird. It's like, is it a game? Is it a toy? I think just having it more as a toy, oh, it's weird because it's made by Harmonix, which is much more, much better known for their, their games. And the, oh shoot, I, I don't know if they do, I think it's Rock Band or Guitar Hero. They do Guitar Hero, right? Don't quote me on that. I don't know right off the top of my head. I'm sorry, harmonics. I forget which is which. But uh, games, like, really good, really solid games. Uh, cooperative, which I think is really good. But if you do get a chance to get your hands on it just for the very visceral play action, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. And I'd be interested... So coming into game design ideas and what we're thinking about here, this idea of echo, of composition, taking the fun of combining things, but making a much lower barrier to entry than traditional music, that seems like a really fun, really rich and juicy experience. Um, so capturing this idea of play Composition, low barrier to entry. Because I think that's a thing, playing, people play instruments, people play music. It's a very similar action as there is to playing with toys. I think something that limits people is there's very clear, if you're tooling around on a guitar, if you're trying to play a trumpet, or even drums, if you're good or not. So there's this tension between the actions, the things you can do with instruments as opposed to traditional toys. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do, but immediately once you're getting into it, there's this judgment, right? There's, there's a right way, which is different from a traditional toy. With a toy, you know, there's somebody might say like, oh, you're supposed to play with dolls like this. There's not really a right and a wrong way to play with toys, whereas with instruments, there's a very strong sense of uh, right and wrong when it comes to how to play. Might seem like we're going off the rails with this, but I think there's a game in here somewhere. Right and wrong way to play. And we could just get rid of that entirely, this concept of right and wrong, or we could play with this idea of playing an instrument correctly versus incorrectly. They do rock band and in the first guitar, you see this is why? So they did the first guitar hero, okay. <laughs> Speaking of waves, my Wi-Fi isn't cooperating today. Sorry, Senor, Senor Baub, Senor Bob, Baub, that's how I want to say your name. Um, yeah, Wi-Fi's tough. I should put that in there though. We're talking about waves, because there's sound waves, but Wi-Fi, which is very essential to our existence. Sorry about the, the camera there. Wi-Fi! Wi-Fi is a wave. Maybe the first two Guitar Heroes. Okay. This, you see, now I'm super curious about this. Who makes Guitar Hero? 
I would ask Google. Red Octane. Okay. So they split off with the licenses for it. That's interesting. So I wasn't right or wrong. I was both right and wrong at the same time, which is great. Guitar Hero sold it, then made Rock Band, because that was with all the instruments, right? So you do the drums. I like the vocals. I just want to do the singing part of it. For tabletop, keeping things visual, I'd maybe want to focus on the timeline view of mixing songs, finding instruments, riffs to fit into certain parts as an actual fitting puzzle. So we're talking about a puzzle aspect and for visualization, we have this idea of waves here. So I'm seeing in my head at the moment, I'm not sure about gamifying it, but having different waves overlapping or potentially having, ooh, <laughs> I laugh because I keep thinking about uh, clear cards for a lot of the games I'm coming up with. Like, oh, what if you lay clear cards over each other? It's such a cool component. I haven't actually gotten to play a game. I haven't played Mystic Veil. Vale. Um, I haven't played Gloom yet. I really want to. I just haven't had the opportunity. Um, but I keep getting hung up on these overlaid transparent components. I really want to try something with that at some point. So I'm seeing potentially a transparent card with different types of waves. Uh, transparent. I'm going to start putting this into our digital notes over here because it sounds like an interesting direction. Not. 100% committed to it yet, so this could end up not being our uh, Echo Wave music game. Echo Wave music game, which is a great name for a game. Not really, it's a working title. We'll, we'll work on that. I uh, get my bullets in here. Transparent cards overlaid with different wave shapes. Uh, potentially, you want to lay the same waves on top of each other or different waves. <laughs> I'm thinking now too, how would I, what would be the best way to prototype that? I have my, I have my lamination sheets. It'd be pretty easy to either draw with Sharpie on the lamination sheets or cut out like a little wave and do a lamination for it. So I'm potentially going to try and prototype some of this. So I'm, I'm trying to think, like, can I get out my laminator, plug it in, and do a test for that? Well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll see what we can do with that. But this is potentially cool. And you have a collection element. The interesting thing about see-through cards is you can kind of see what's coming up, right? Unless you have have them in a book or a bag or something, then you miss out on the hidden information to some extent, which is fine. You, not every card-based thing has to be in a deck, or you can have a cover to the deck, or you can just lay out all the cards instead of worrying too much, or just not have hidden information be part of the game. Not as relevant. All right. So what would be, from a toy aspect, I think this is, this is a cool concept, like building waves on top of each other, potentially having, um, shoot. So if the wave, if the waves match, then it's synchronicity. You're having, um, shoot, I'm trying to think of the words. So you have dissonance, assonance, dissonance. If the waves don't match up together uh, and synergy harmony, I think that's what I'm looking at. Synergy or harmony, you can potentially have I might have to do a little research into 
the actual waves of a sound. You can have harmonization without the waves perfectly matching. Um, if you have like on the octaves, so you could have different type of these waves lining up and looking really cool together. Maybe something like Looney Quest, which has transparencies. Sound surfing. Mm. Uh, okay. Let's <laughs> let's dig more into this sound surfing. Is that a game? Or is that just something that you came up right now? Because I like um, I like this idea. Sound surfing. My husband made a game when he was in school called circuit surfing, or this idea of circuit surfing, where you have this character surfing through the computer on the circuit boards and having this like cool track. So this idea of uh, motion or having a character moving along these wave tracks. Sound surfing could be cool. Would this be a physical thing? Is a question the character moving around would be more of a metaphorical thing sound surfing i'll have to play with that think about that a little bit see where that goes let's see let's tap back into so i like this idea i like this component these clear cards that you're layering on top of each other with a wave picture. I think that would be a fun thing to play with. And from there's a little bit of gameplay there for if you match them up, something happens. If you have a harmony, something happens. If you have a dissonance, potentially something happens. I think there's something there. I'm not sure too much of exactly where that would end up going. So I think we just play around. Like sometimes for game design, if I'm not entirely sure where a game is going to go, I like just having a component uh, and playing around with the component a little bit. That's what I was doing for the, the stained glass mosaic game where I have these lines laid out on a card. I'm gonna draw this up. It's a little, ooh. Although if this game could end up merging, because I wasn't sure exactly what to do with that either. It wasn't exactly um, waves, but it did have this idea of a, an organic shape evolving over time. So all I really had to work with was this idea of different card shapes at first I was looking at things with this arc where they're coming off, they're all coming off to one side and making split sections. Uh, I eventually started playing around a little bit more with them for a uh, broken glass vibe. So it ends up being maybe a stained glass thing with different colored panels. Uh, anyways, long story short, how it ties together is this was a cool component that I was playing around with, trying to make a game emerge from this. I could see the transparent wave cards being a cool component to play around with as well. Uh, we talk a little bit about games, toys, play, what it means for something to have a good toy aspect to it. Uh, it's something that you have it on the table and people just want to do stuff with it. They might not want to do the game that you came up with, uh, but And Then We Died has a really great toy lens, toy aspect to it. So people will take the word cards, just start moving them around, playing around to see what emerges. Sound surfing. Just made it up. Just came out of my brain. I love that. Like, where did that cool idea come from? Is that from a movie? It's like, no, that's from my brain, man. All right, sound surfing, uh, Tabarua is a surfing game. So I'm just gonna put that down there, but we're not doing, that's an actual wave surfing about actual surfing. We're talking about have a little surfer person up here 
surfing with some sunglasses. Maybe they have a cowboy hat. I don't know. My surfer, if they want to have a cool hat, and a cool surfboard. Maybe their surfboard has a picture of a shark on it. <laughs> oh my gosh, can I draw this shark? T. It's not fitting onto the surfboard anymore, but uh, that's basically what a shark looks like. Very silly sideways shark. So what does it mean to sound surf? Surf the waves of sound. Music surfing, we talk about surfing radio stations, right? Which is cool, I never, surfing radio waves station. I never thought about it too closely. I'm sure I saw the association at some point. It's like, you're surfing the radio because they're like waves, they're sound waves. Probably some very clever person came up with that concept originally. Surfing the waves of sound, uh, surfing stations, channels. And it's interesting if you think of it from a radio perspective. Then hmm. radio is such an interesting thing if we're talking about sounds, waves, the concepts of that, because radio is transmitted through the air on waves, which is pretty cool, as opposed to digitally over the internet, inner tubes. And if you, <laughs> for those of you who are not too young to have experienced this, if you're actually turning the dial of the radio stations, they kind of cut in and out of each other. I'm gonna write that down too. So this is one idea. Let me come down here. Uh, sound surfing. Sound surfing is a cool name too, right? If we can come up with something for that, that would be pretty fun. Surfing, the radio waves, channels, radio stations. And because of the way the waves worked, right, in the different frequencies, you would go from one to another and sometimes they would merge a little bit. Or they would go into, like you would come into the station and then you would hit static. And if you were doing the tuning manually as opposed to punching in discrete, discrete numbers, you would hear, you would actually have to dial in to a station. Go from one to another. Stations and channels mixed together, dial into a station. You'd hear another one or static. Um, so this idea of dialing in and getting the best, um, getting the best, crispest, crispest, <laughs> crispestest signal. Uh, then movement too, which is a whole other factor, right? You're driving in your car and all of a sudden you're away from this one and you have another station kind of coming in as you're driving around. So this has this cool location. or echo location, sound location. So bring it back to echoes. Um, and this idea of sound waves, just draw, <laughs> draw a top down car. This is what a car looks like from the top. Uh, headlights and the sounds, the waves are kind of coming from different directions all at the same time draw my waves in different ways, right? Because you have the the waves and then waves as seen from a top-down perspective. Or maybe, and I'm just totally spitballing here, seeing, throwing stuff at the wall, see what sticks. Maybe you are a surfer on your surfboard with your sunglasses and the radio waves are coming to you in the middle of the ocean. Maybe you're stranded. 
Maybe you're stranded after surfing too far out into the ocean and you need to use these radio waves to guide you back home. That is bizarre. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to write it down because sometimes those weirdest ideas are the ones that lead to the actual good ideas. Surfer lost at sea using radio waves to get back home. All right, what do, let's see what chat is saying about this bizarre, bizarrity. Waveforms overlapped can create geometry to traverse over. I like that actually. Uh, so we're talking about the waves being a, it's not something that you can see. It's not conceptual, it's a real thing, but it's not a physical thing, right? So what if you have overlapping waves, uh, but the transform intersection overlap does create a physical terrain type thing that you're moving across. That's pretty cool. And if you're talking about waves interacting in this way, uh, and that's the interesting thing about sound waves is like sound is this, the vibrations are the same. So if you, if you have waves like overlapping together, they don't just sit flat on top of each other like they would in with the static cards, like a wave, if two are going at the same time, it can actually like double the wave, right? So you have like a really big wave or it can like change the pattern. So the way that actual sound waves interact together uh, is very fascinating, scientific. Uh, and you get, shoot, what's the, the technical term for it? Um, you get points of inflection, right? Where you get uh, the sound is super blown out, interacting. Combining waveforms to try to manipulate values would be interesting. Like you care at the value certain points of time, but you're all playing waveform cards to manipulate a shared sum. <laughs> like an awful dissonant simultaneous balance, poof, awful, dissonant, simultaneous battle of the bands. That's a mouthful. I'm gonna... <laughs> I kind of like that concept of instead of trying to make an actual really good song, like making the best music you can make, making the most dissonant, <laughs> dissonant music. So you're trying to make just really bad music. You're trying to make it so you make people's ears bleed in a bad way. <laughs> I don't know why we're thinking about this in such a torturous way, but it's funny. Ears bleed in a bad way. Okay. Uh, and that, that reminds me too a little bit about drop mix because they have, it's, in, it's this little, it's almost a little bit frustrating, especially playing kind of a limited card set. So the nice thing about drop mix is they have all the rights to the music. So you're playing with the music that you know and love. You're like, oh my gosh, I know, I love this song. You know, Childish Gambino, different artists that you know and love that you can listen to. Uh, but the, they have very specific tracks. So the audio card goes into the audio slot and if you put like five audio cards in all of the sections, it's bizarre. It's like this weird uh, cacophony of sound. Uh, so that could be something. And maybe you wouldn't necessarily need transparent cards to overlay uh, if you could have a track with slots potentially for the different cards and visually you still see the cards with the different waves but they have uh, numbers on the cards themselves and have modifiers. 
I could see it either being like a pretty technical, uh, technical, sure, a technical scientific thing where you dig into the the science behind sound vibrations energy uh, or making it more like a, a looser mechanically sort of a game where you're just trying to capture because it's all, all about the experience like what is the feeling you're trying to capture here do you want people to think about the science behind these waves and how they're interacting or you want people just to be like slapping things down uh, and using the theming of waves, sound, and music as more of a framing device than something that's heavily driving the theme. Um, waves as a framing device versus heavily driving the theme? Question mark, because we don't know yet. Let me boost this up a little bit. It's looking a little small, small. <laughs> okay, you said ham radio. I know what a ham radio is. I don't remember the exact provenance of it, but you say ham radio, and of course the first thing I'm thinking is like an actual ham, like a, a hodge of ham, whatever it's called, with like the radio in there. A hank of ham? I don't know what the quantities of ham. I don't know how it's determined. So you got your radio in here. You usually draw ham with like a bone, right? Then you got the ham pattern on here. I hope everyone's really enjoying my ham radio drawings because this is what we're doing now. This is where we're talking about ham and radios. Ham radio, food as uh, technical devices, probably a game for another time. All right, let's see, let's, let's come back. Let's bring it back. A stranded surfer talks to dolphins using echolocation, oh my gosh. I actually really like that idea. Um, talk with echolocation. So in this one, we have our, our top-down surfer our person is lying on the board in the middle of the ocean uh, waves all around they're stranded uh, Ooh, that's pretty good actually they're still wearing sunglasses right that's an important part of the picture and their mouth is open because they're doing the sound waves and underneath you have your dolphin. Oh, this is gonna be a great dolphin. Oh my gosh, it's even got like the flippy fins. It's got the dolphin mouth probably. Oh wow, that's, is that is that on? No, I gotta move this up. Yeah. Ooh, uh, this is cool. A couple of weeks ago we were talking about uh, alien communication as part of our Star Starfleet kindergarten series. This idea that you're a kindergartner trying to communicate cross-culturally, but with aliens from other planets. We haven't developed that one out yet, although it's been ticking in the back of my mind. But what if we took some of that into this for miscommunication with our dolphin siblings who we're talking to under the water, trying to communicate with with echolocation, but they can't uh, mix signals. <laughs> they can't quite understand what we're trying to communicate. Uh, it could be a pattern matching. And we, we come back to the waves idea for this, actually. So you could either have it represented as uh, kind of the sideways audio symbol here, or have it represented as wave patterns for the communication. 
maybe it's cooperative. You're trying to match your wave patterns with uh, with the dolphins. One of you plays. <laughs> This is why I love talking about games. It's just like, one of you plays as the dolphins, one of you plays as the stranded surfer, and you're trying to get your wave symbols to match up so that you can communicate. <laughs> Dolphin, stranded, surfer, uh... Echo location communication simulator. Now that's that's a game title for you. Communication simulator. Um, do, 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 do. Where's my stuff here? Cooperative. Match up your wave symbols with other players. Asymmetric. Oh, can't spell that. <laughs> yes, Google, Google preserve us. Sound waves move differently through uh, different media, like air versus water. Communication cooperative with dolphins. Uh, wave modifiers. That's an interesting thing to consider. Uh, air, water, syrup, I don't know why, it's a substance, uh, dirt, stone, metal. <laughs> Cacophony is an excellent word. I'd like to use cacophony or caco cacophonic, cacophonic, is that, can I conjugate it in that way? Hey Google, what does cacophonic mean? Oh, cacophony. I don't know if that's an appropriate conjugation. Caco oh yes, it looks like that's actually a word. Cool. Cacophonic. Okay, new game direction. Doesn't matter what the game is, has to fit that as a title. Huh? Huh? Ham radio is just you're <laughs> in to make another food game, but this time about music. Look, food can be in any game. You can be a food game about music, food game about radios, food game about dinosaurs, dinosaur food. Well, that's evolution, I guess, would be that. Although evolution is not just about dinosaurs. I just always associate with dinosaurs because that wooden dino meeple is really great. <laughs> Ooh. This, okay, this is a, this is actually cool, Senor Bob, Senor Bob. I like that, because uh, I'm thinking, I'm looking at these different types of waves, and how easily how easily visually parsed they will be, but seeing it with the punctuation here, just parentheses, right? Just different sets of parentheses, and maybe like a dash. So for visually representing this, uh, thinking about prototyping and simplification, that could be really cool. Almost like Morse code, like a dolphin Morse code. So I'm looking into the components and seeing this idea of cards with the, the different symbols symbols on them and what that might mean in this dolphin surfer universe that we're creating here uh yeah baby parentheses three parentheses one parentheses bring me a fish and if it is a cooperative thing the actual gameplay from a theme perspective could be learning to communicate <laughs> with the dolphins. So you could do it, you could have uh, like memes, memes as in like a unit of pop culture 
meaning or for um, etymology, like the roots. So word roots. I love that this is where, where this game is taking us right now. Word roots of you might have like this. You're creating a shared language. You're either learning the dolphin's language or creating a shared language. What? Learning dolphins language versus creating a shared language. So that could be different. If you're simply interpreting and there's an absolute interpretation, I guess that would be more of a puzzle uh, than necessarily a game if there's a correct solution to everything but if, if each game you start off with a known root or the dolphins are creating the word roots and you have to go through that with limited communication to figure out what the different things are so maybe you put one card down and see what happens and they show you a fish and you're like oh my gosh they have a card that has a fish on it like that card is a fit that that word means fish in this game oh, I can do better fish than that there we go ah, bigger body smaller tail this little fin little fish eye that's kind of like a fish <laughs> bring me a fish bring me your greatest fish all right so Let's take it back, bring it back, see what we end up with here. So we've gone through a couple of different ideas, different iterations, looking at this wave-based communication with our dolphin friends, got some ham radios, overlaying of the sine, cosine radio waves to make discordant patterns or the same patterns. I just added a million symbols to this thing. Talk about communication. Um, we have the car echolocation, traveling in a car, listening to radio from different locations. More wave stuff. And coming all the way back to our original mind mapping brainstorm here of echoing duplication location seems to be a pretty consistent concept for everything that we're talking about here location and the movement of sound over time there's a lot of different directions we could potentially go in with this really cool sound-based, music-based game design. Uh, but I think movement of sound over time is pretty consistent to what we've been talking about here today on our lovely show. And then uh, communication and interpretation of signals is really what sound and music is, right? We're interpreting the signals that are coming into our brain. Interpretation of signals. Ooh, that's kind of fun too. Like we're talking about surfing and positioning, movement through space, either on a surfboard or in a car. What if there's an element of distance to the game? And it's just spitballing some ways that that could happen. If you have to throw a paper airplane with a signal on it, so there's a dexterity element. Um, so yeah, what if part of the game is actually moving your signal or your symbol through space? And the paper airplane floating uh, kind of does that thing. It was one of the first things that popped into my mind. Moving your signal through space. Uh, I'm gonna go over here because I can type a little faster than I can write it out. Moving your sound signal 
through capital T, through capital S space. So some ways to move something through space, paper airplane, uh, those echo chambers, it's an echo chamber. Those reflective sound mirrors that you see at museums. <laughs> I like the, the prototyping of this particular, this could be a museum game. It could be a physical space game. That could be pretty cool. Like this is a game specifically to play in a museum with those reflecting mirrors. Or you, you, stand, at the, you, you stand at the focal point of the, um, shoot, the curved space and that reflects the sounds and the other person stand, stands across the room and they're perfectly aligned so you can hear them whisper in that small space. Um, the can telephone. I never actually got those to work. That would be a fun thing to play around. Um, sounds traveling over string or cord. Uh, and then it could be, it could still be kept mechanical and in a more table surface space with like movement of these cards within the sphere. Sphere of influence, movement of cards within the sphere. So not necessarily, not necessarily going to a large scale type of a game. I like this idea of having it be cans or string, uh, like the old school telephones. Again, that I said I never remember getting those to work, but you saw them in old shows and videos. So imagine somebody somewhere has gotten these to work. Um, methods of transmitting and gathering the sounds. Ooh, it could also be, and this also taps into a game, someone else's stuff that we prototyped recently. So the transmission of the sound could be putting it, putting the sound wave Card or chunk into some sort of a container and then passing the container around. <laughs> passing a container. So this is like the idea of packets, right? It's like the sound is packaged into this container and I'm handing the container to you. Passing a container of sound. Of sound. Senior Baub says, when I was at Pax U, I could clearly hear a conversation on the other side of the hallway because of the curved ceiling. Was that in the main hall? I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah. Because they have the, they have that cool archway in the convention center where it has that sound refraction sort of a thing. Do uh, yeah, so the way it works, just visualize here. So you have all the sounds bouncing off the edges at different angles, and there's a point of inflection where these things come together. And if you stand in that, you can get the collected, collective sound tunnel. All right, so going in a lot of different directions here. As far as some prototyping going, actually sitting down and prototyping some of this stuff, we have a couple of more solid directions. Have this idea of the units, the dolphin language, where you're giving people phonemes. I think that was the, the word that I was looking at looking for. You have these discrete units that you're trading and interacting and trying to build up. 
uh, a language with these individual units. And that's a pretty cool idea. And then we have this prototyping idea of waves. Uh, I could see either just writing directly. If you got something like projector overheads and write on that with a Sharpie, you could prototype something. You could also potentially, if I made something that was card size, um, I could do a frame. Because I could just try and laminate the, the curves themselves. But if I had a basic frame that I was printing out with all the pieces and the waves and some affordance, uh, then you could do use an X-Acto knife to cut around that. And as long as, long as framed potentially using some thicker cardstock as well. You could cut out a frame and have the wave in there as well and have those overlaid. That could be something that's doable. So there's two pretty interesting ideas that I think we've come up with today. You have this idea of the waves uh, overlaying the clear transparent cards, which can be pretty cool. And then this idea of echolocation sound phonemes. We're imagining either cards or just little chits or tokens, chips, where you have different combination of just like very uh, graphical bytes, phonemes or bytes. Like this is a unit of language that means something. Uh, and then you're working either by yourself to collect these things or on your team to put together sentences of these things. So for that, you your core prototyping units would be these tokens with the different symbols on them. Like you got a double bracket. Um, I think you might want either different sizes or have like a dash in there. Uh, and then there would visually graphically you would have those bits so that would be the start of creating your language and then the question becomes mechanically how do i as i have a stack of them right like maybe 10 different ones to work from and each person or team would need to have the same tokens to work from for that uh, and then so I have, we each have one of these. And we're trying to communicate some sort of a concept with these, but with no, so it's not emojis, right? It's not like a bread and be like, oh, that's a picture of a bread. Um, for these completely abstract symbols, how would you be able to attach meaning? It could be like a 20 questions sort of a thing. I'm not entirely sure about that. That's something that I'm going to have to plan out uh, and figure out what what game what game does this game want to be? It's a really good question. All right. So last week when we did the I mentioned at the beginning of the stream last week we hopped right into prototyping an earlier game. A uh, suggestion of some of the viewers to go straight from the concepting of a game idea into the prototyping of it, which is kind of crazy because usually, you know, you let a game sit and marinate a little bit and figure out exactly what the game is there. But I think we could, I think we could do it. I think we could come up with at least the concept of one of these and go back and forth, you know, start prototyping something a little bit, see what that turns into. I have to see if my Photoshop thing works out. Do, 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 cause I know the camera. I'll just add in. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm modding my uh, window capture. 
display capture. Sure. Ooh, yeah. Actually, I could just do. Ah, it's on top of everything. Ah, it's underneath things. Cool. That's kind of cool. You just put my Photoshop over here. <gasps> okay. Cool. That works pretty well. Because uh, <laughs> the issue I had before was. Whoa. This is like doing something weird. <laughs> the issue I had before is that I wasn't showing my actual window and I was doing things. I mean, like now I'm waving my hands and magical things are happening. Oh, yeah. So I'm starting with artichoke cards. Um, well, we'll worry about that later. I'll just hop right into it. Um, get rid of that. Start with our blank slate. See what it would look like to prototype one of these cool wave cards. <laughs> Part of it is going to be, do I want to just find a wave symbol? Ooh, I can go to noun project. Noun project. If you haven't checked out noun project and you're interested in game designer, game designing, I definitely recommend it. Um, I, I like art. Art is slow for me. Um, it takes me time. So I wouldn't call myself a bad artist. I would never call someone a bad artist. It just takes me longer to make something look the way that I want to. So for prototyping, I want to get a game out there. I don't necessarily want to sit around, mess around with things, uh, and take a really long time to get there. So Noun Project has been useful for me to do things a little bit faster. And hopefully, if I've done this correctly, yes, we're doing it. Uh, and then I can have the thing come up properly. I just want it to be hovering here. Perfect. Excellent. So for example, Look for a sound wave and for an project in case you're curious there's a free version of it where you can pay for the rights I subscribe to the yearly subscription for this uh, and that means that I can use them not commercial nah, not commercial commercially uh, I don't believe I have to double check the license for that but for prototyping um, I can have that and use that ooh so here's some cool things if we're talking about waves uh, we were looking at the curved shapes for the dolphin sound waves, but that's another way to represent things that could be pretty cool. Interesting. So we have some of these different shapes that we can use. Oops, this is back to fireplace. It's for another game that I'm working on. So these sound waves are pretty crazy let's just grab one grab one grab and go all right so it's going to be sound wave in our downloads folder cool all right so there's a starting for our sound wave card that we're working on. Shift that around, embigify it. Because my idea for this is, I might have to squeeze this a little bit. Having the card be length lengthwise, so you have more of the actual wave picture going on there. Ooh, this is cool because we can actually just stretch it out and have it be different shapes. Cool. So my idea for this is I'm trying to see. You can see the mouse here, right? Oh, cool. Perfect. So 
they have this card having it lay landscape instead of portrait cut out around the edges here so you have the clear just leaving the black lines put this onto a heavier cardstock for printing make it a little bit easier to put it through the lamination process and make the cards that way um, so I'm going to start a new process where when I'm designing these things, I know there's a ton of different ways. I still need to learn the method of putting everything into the spreadsheet and just have the images come out of that. But I'm a little more comfortable with Photoshop, so um, make my Photoshop file, put a bunch of the different cards in there. Uh, so we'll just call this wave one card. Do I want to have some sort of information? I think I'll actually put wave one on there as well. <laughs> one thing I've learned from doing a lot of different cards, um, there's definitely an impulse to just make a card, you know, like throw this wave down on the card, laminate it, have the see throughingness and the laying stuff on top of each other. Uh, but if you can put a little more information, especially for sets, or you're going back to your rules and you're trying to figure out, okay, what was the three squiggle wave card? What did that mean? So I'm going to put this on here. Um, just call it wave one. And let's rotate that so that is actually also in the correct orientation um yeah i'm just gonna go with that my idea for this i don't have a super solid idea of the gameplay yet so my plan is to just make a bunch of these wave cards laminate them um gonna have to finish up kind of early today and i don't have my set up for the table for cutting. So I'll have to do that off camera and then post some pictures to show everyone how it turned out, but I can at least get this part done. Uh, don't need these. Bye things. <laughs> I literally learned, Papa's new bag says, I literally learned, learned about the noun project yesterday. For what it's worth, I use game icons.net for early stuff. Um, yeah, I use the noun project because Sean, another designer, really recommended it. There's just so many things is a big thing for me. I think gameicons.net has more traditional gamey stuff. So it's like if you need a dragon or a sword, it's got a lot of that stuff. But I make weird games <laughs> where I needed like a hearth, a forge, uh, a waterfall, different things. So I've only had it for a day, but it is super cool and exciting. I'm gonna post a picture of my cards on Twitter later today because I'm really excited with how it turned out. And yes, I did do the whole thing of starting to, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to, um, oh shoot, I might have just deleted the art for that. That's too bad. I, I started doing art, it took me like two hours to do two cards. I was making a really fancy volcano and I stopped and said, what, what am I doing here? Um, one of my big things that I'm working on as a designer is uh, trying to simplify some of that stuff to get to the game faster. You can always go back when you have some more time, do a fun, uh, have fun doing some of the art. But if you just wanna get a game done, uh, it's good to not get too caught up with that. All right, so here we are for wave two. We've renamed it to wave two. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to um, flip it horizontal. Of course, that messes up where my wave where my words are at. So I'll move those down here. Same wave. I think we're just gonna keep this art for it and flip and adjust and make a couple of each type. Uh, again, for this, still not entirely sure where the gameplay is gonna go, but I'm hoping it's one of those that I'll make the components, play around with them, and it'll help to inspire a really cool idea. All right, so wave two is just flipped. That is good probably end up doing just nine of these. Oh, also, here's a question for anyone who uses Photoshop. 
if there's a way to make your new folders uh, cascade downwards instead of upwards, that would be really helpful. Because I make like, I go one, two, three, but it always makes it above the one that I was just making, which is super unintuitive for me and weird. I don't like it. I would like to know how to fix that. Wave three, all right. Um, so wave three, we're just gonna squish this a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about names again, just like super silly stuff. So game, let's call this new, we're calling this game cacophonic, right? Cacophonic. Cacophonic makes it sound bad, right? Alright, so cacophonic. And now you get to see, this is one of the best parts of the stream, right? You get to see all my nomenclature, my, my terrible naming practices. Cacophonic cards. Alright, ooh, I can show off Chris's great new tool that I use as well. That would be fun. At first glance, Noun Project looks way more complete. Just figured I'd mention the free option. Uh, one quick sidebar for that is I like paying for stuff. Because I was looking at the free options and like, so for Man and All Artichokes, my prototype art, I actually bought clip art off of Etsy, mostly because I'm showing it so frequently. If someone starts asking questions about it, uh, like, where'd you get this art? I prefer saying like, oh, I bought it, um, as opposed to like, oh, I just grabbed it off the internet. So even though the rights are there, the nice thing about Noun Project is you pay for it, you don't have to um, give anyone credit for the stuff. So, because of the way I show the cards, I just show the art. I don't have links showing to where I got it. So I don't really have a good way to credit people when I'm showing pictures of my prototypes. Uh, so I like doing it. I'm used to do internet writing though. I'm super obsessive about doing the rights and giving credit where credit is due. So I like the noun project for that. All right. So, ooh, we have all sorts of fun. Nope, that is the wrong thing. Scale. So we're going to just squeeze this a little bit that way. That's fun. All right, there's our wave three. Wave four. I'm thinking of just making nine of these, mostly because uh, that's how many are in a sheet. <laughs> so it makes it pretty easy to do that. Ooh, that looks cool. So that's a. Uh, when we're laying these things over, that's a little bit of a precursor to what that could look like. So it's pretty fun. All right. So this is going to be wave four. Um, now I want to get them more squeezed together, which I think I'm gonna make a couple of these. All right. Wave five. I hope this is fun and relaxing for people and not stressful. Um, so I don't want to be the shorter ones. Yeah. This, I think I'm just gonna make it twice as fast. So if I do that, so this should, almost line up and perfect yeah sweet this is fun i'm having fun playing around with these waves all right so we are here at wave five duplicate that group uh, make the inverse Oh my gosh, I just love how, you see, this is another thing about Noun Project, like it just looks, stuff just looks so good right off the, the bat. Um, 
So I'm, I'm very happy with the the way that this is turning out. So you see, it's it may not be a game at all. It may not be a fun game. This is going to be a game that looks cool. So I like that. Uh, so what else? We got the... I think these fast waves, but making them a little bit taller. That's going to get in the way of my card names, but we'll just we'll we'll go with it. We'll see we'll see see if we can make it work. Alright. For wave, we're actually going to merge this into one big wave. Um yeah, if we just make that like super skewed out. I think that's that's good. Let's move this over. And again, reminder, as we're developing this, we're going to try and put this on heavy card. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. A little hoarse today. Gonna try and put this on heavy cardstock and then actually cut around the waves and laminate the frame for this so we get the see through vibe. Uh, it's gonna be really cool when it all comes together. So, this is wave <clears throat> seven. I think I'm just gonna do eight actually because then I have equal numbers of all of the different cards that we're doing here. All right, wave eight. And that's just going to be a reflection of this curve. Transform, flip it over. Cool. We can actually just make these visible and see like all the cool layers. That's going to look pretty cool. I think it's going to look cool. Uh, and that's wave eight. So I think if I can do it fast, I'm going to just make the files of all those different cards. Oh shoot, my wave eight. My text is in the wrong place. Shift it over. I'm gonna make the cards and then show off the the fun software that I use for making sheets. Chris has so generously provided. Alright, so I'm just gonna save these out. Wave eight card. Save these out as PNGs. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Uh, so the part where it says what the wave is is going to move around. I'm not too worried about that at the moment. I'm just going to let it be. Ooh. You are over here. I'm just going to let it be what it is. And test it. I think it's important. Let's see, we are at six. I think it's important to get prototypes rolling as quickly as possible. <clears throat> it's entirely possible that there's just no game here. Um, we could spend a lot of time messing around and making things look really pretty and really polished only to find that it's not actually a game and I like to find that out sooner rather than later before putting a ton of work into it on the flip side you could say anything could become a game like if I worked on this enough I'm sure it would turn into something but as you can see from this stream, coming up with ideas, there's just so much, so much rich idea space to come up with things. Like it's not really worth, if you can do this, if you can do a brainstorm, do it once a week or even once a month, whatever, you can come up with so many cool ideas. Let me just move back so you can look at our fun brainstorm while I'm finishing up saving these files. There's so much you can do. We can, even just from this stream today, we have the dolphin game, we have the communication game. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of rich space. 
don't get caught up on a design you're not excited about, I think is the most important Bob Ross-esque takeaway from this. All right, and that should be the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Awesome. All right, cool. So let me open this up and drag it over so you can see me making. Oh, no, come back. Making my sweet card sheet over here. Eight and a half by 11. Uh, get my cut lines in there. And I can just add these individual files. Oh, that's my merge game that I'm working on. Uh, Cacophonic. <clears throat> the other cool thing is if we're just doing one of each card for now, but if you want to do multiples, you can put those numbers in square brackets um, to get that in there. Sweet. Yeah. So there's all of our cards. I'm gonna download this as Cacophonic. Open that up. No, that is a different thing. <laughs> that is not the file. This is not the file you're looking for. Uh, Cacophonic, there we go. Perfect. Bring this over here. Yeah. And you should be able to see that now as our sheet that we have. All that's left is printed out on some cardstock, do some cutting, uh, and laminate it. And hopefully I should have something either later today or tomorrow to show off from this stream. Uh, that was <clears throat> a lot of fun. Oh, now he's, Chris is actually here in the chat, so he's going to be critiquing the way that I'm using the software. Uh, there's a preset for 8.5 by 11 poker sheet. Scroll down from the main drop menu. What? Poker card no bleed? Wait, clear this. Uh, jumbo cards. Poker card no bleed. Okay, well, there you go. So there's all sorts of fun options here. Maybe I'll have to ask you later. Is that the one that cuts? Because I had the cut issue with them before. It's okay. Oh, I'll figure it out. Oh, let me bring up this sweet thing. Uh, so yeah. I mean, this. If we just take a, a second to, to look at what we have done here. This is just a little print and a cut away from prototype pieces. That was less than two hours. Uh, and we did a lot of exploration for, for different ideas there. It's not, definitely not a finished game. So it takes a little while to for everything to come together, but we have some components. We have something that we can physically make and play around with ourselves or take to a play test, show off to other people. Uh, and that's a way, I wanna say, and that's how it's done. That's a way to do it. You might find different ways work better for you, but uh, I think it's, it's great just to come up with new stuff and practice things and be creative, not be too tied to ideas that you're very committed to. Even if you have a big magnum opus design idea that you're working on, I think it's worth it to do a little bit of these creative exercises. We have our mind map over here. We have our cards that came out of it over here and yeah, you can put something together really fun, really fast, um, and not put so much pressure on the whole design process. So that's about it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a ton of fun. Uh, I'll try to get some of the pictures posted so you can see the final product for this later today. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I think we came with some good game ideas. You can join me here Tuesdays, 4 p.m. PST every week. Follow me on Twitter at mlarkins for follow-ups and videos. If you missed part of the stream, you can go back and watch. And yeah, this has been a ton of fun. It's been great having you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm gonna go drink like a bajillion waters.